Hi there, it's Woody from Splice. I've got a couple of tips to show you about using transitions. So let's just jump in. First of all, I'm going to add a transition using the Quick Transitions dialog box. It's accessible from here, the Quick Transitions button on the toolbar of the timeline. But you can also get it by pressing the backslash character on the keyboard. It's usually above or around the return key. The Quick Transitions dialog pops up and it tells us a couple things. First of all, we're going to add a dissolve. You can also choose from some other transitions inside of this. I'm actually going to use a variation of a dissolve called a film dissolve. The difference between it is that a film dissolve looks more organic. Um, it tries to simulate the way a dissolve looks when it's printed using optical film as opposed to doing an electronic video transition. Uh, the transition dialog actually has two bars that go across the top. So along the top is my outgoing clip, which for me is the leaf. And then along the bottom is the incoming clip, which is the, the underwater shot. So you'll notice that the colors on this bar correlate to the colors that are down here in the timeline. So my A shot has this green color and my B shot is also the same green color. The light area is what you would see if the footage was playing back and you didn't have a transition. So you'd see all of this footage from the A shot and there'd be a cut and then you'd switch over to the B shot, which is your incoming clip. The dark area represents the handles or the frames beyond the out mark for your A shot and the frames before the in mark for your B shot. So when you add footage to your timeline, like this, if this is your outgoing shot, so the one on the left-hand side, if it was the outgoing shot, then these would be all the handles that are represented by the dark area up here in the quick transition dialog. If this was the incoming shot, then these are all of your handles. Generally, when you put a shot into the timeline, you don't want to put the in mark at the very, very beginning, nor the out mark at the very, very end, because that leaves you with no handles, which means it's, it's pretty hard to do transitions. It's also hard to do trimming later on. So if you can, move in a little bit from the beginning, a little bit from the end. So since the transition is actually a, a, usually a second, then you need a half a second of outgoing media and half a second of incoming media. So since I'm running at 30 frames per second, my transition is 15 frames before the cut and 15 frames after. So when you put footage into the timeline and you're marking it in the source monitor, you probably advance about half a second to a second at least, mark your in mark, and make sure that your out mark is no more than half a second to a second from the end of the media the end of the clip. So that's how to read that graph. You can go ahead and press add or because it has the box around it, it tells you that that's the default button. So you can just press the return key and it'll add that too. Now I have my dissolve applied. I'm going to back up and play it through. It's everything you'd expect to see in a dissolve. We have the ability to modify our transitions using the transition manipulation tool. So provided that this button is turned on, you can come down and just drag the transition to make it longer to change where it starts or to uh, just modify its duration to make it shorter also. Now the quick transition tool has a couple tricks up its sleeve. Let's say that I'm going to add another transition maybe to this uh, to this cut. I'll go ahead and click quick transition. Remember it's backslash on the keyboard and I'm going to just point out that there's this big empty space. Nothing's there. Uh, if I cancel this and I come back and I mark an in mark and an out mark, I actually put the in mark way back here. So I have the in mark and the out mark, and I go back into quick transition, and lo and behold, this section now has content in it. It has a checkbox that allows us to apply the current transition to all the edits from the beginning, from the in mark to the out mark, with the option of skipping existing transitions. So with this second option selected, I wouldn't get a tip to color where I already have this dissolved, but I would get it on these subsequent one, two, three, four edits, kind of like this. Now the dip to color is by default black, and the fade to color is black, and the fade from color is black. In fact, wherever it says color in quick transitions, it just means black. So I suppose you could say that it's all the colors, or Maybe none of the colors, however that works. Nonetheless, you can customize it. So if I go into my effect editor, I'll change the color. Now when you're in the effect editor, you're put into essentially what's called effect mode. And in effect mode, this position represents the beginning of the effect. That position represents the end of the effect. Normally, the far left underneath the record monitor represents the beginning of the timeline, and the far right represents the end of the timeline but not so when you're in effect mode. And you're in effect mode when the effect editor is open and there's an effect loaded inside of it. 
So I can see this is my dip to black. It's black at the center and comes back at the beginning. And instead of dipping to black, I might want to dip to a color that exists already in the image. For example, my incoming image has this blue, and maybe I want to use that as the color that I'm dipping to. So I'm just going to move my blue line like I've done, my current position indicator, to the end so I can actually see the color. Switch back here to the effect editor. In the effect editor, I can tap this box to choose an existing color, or I can drag from, not click and then move, but drag from that swatch to here to pick up that color of blue. And if I move through my dip to color, you'll see that I dip to blue and then come back to the sky like that. If you can find a, a color that exists in your outgoing image and your incoming image, that's often a good color to, to blend to, unless you really want to dip to black. Now that I've saved this, maybe I want to use it again and again. So I'm going to save it to, uh, to a bin. It's called an effect template. So you take the icon, you drag it over, drop it into a bin like this, you give it a better name. So I'm going to call this dip to blue. I dip to sky blue, actually. There we go. Uh, close my effect editor. And then in the future, when I want to add or use this effect again, I can uh, just drag it directly from the bin. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just start clearing out these effects so I can show you some more stuff. I'm just going to tap on each one and delete it. Because there's a, another secret we have when it comes to the Quick Transitions dialog. Here I'm back in Quick Transition. This time I use the keyboard shortcut of backslash to access it. And I can take my menu and normally I have you know, the stock standard transitions like dissolves, fades, and dip to colors and so forth. But what you can do is in your project window, you make a, a new bin. You give it a very particular name. It's quick transitions with an S on the end of it. Quick transitions. I spelled that wrong. And it's really important that you don't spell it wrong, otherwise this trick doesn't work. Quick transitions. Better. And then you put transition effects into it. Ones that you want to reuse, like that one. Now this little asterisk located at the top of the bin by the title tells me that this bin hasn't been saved. So I'm just going to hit Command S on the keyboard. It's a, this shortcut, Save Bin, to save it. Or you can just close it. That would save it too, because whenever you close a bin, it automatically saves. And then what happens is when you go to Quick Transitions, you will find that it's been appended to the list. So I can hit that, play it all, go. Now they all get the dip to blue. Now another way you could use this, I'm just going to undo that with Command Z. Another way you could use this is to uh, maybe do some flashes. So when, when pictures are taken, you've got white flashes. I'm going to go make a standard dip to color and then switch it to a white flash. So dip to color, make it nice and short, just two frames. Add, then Customize it so that the color is uh, white or snow. And then I'm going to save it to my quick transitions bin. That way it's going to show up in the quick transitions dialog. Dip to, this is going to be flash white. Or I suppose we could just call it a white flash. And close it. And close this. And then we'll go find the thing we're taking pictures of. Let's go take pictures of, I guess, those leaves. And I'm going to start chopping this up using my add edit. So add and edit here, and then advance 10 frames or so, another add edit, and that's five frames or so, another add edit, 10, add and edit, two, three, four, five, six, seven, add and edit. Couple more, edit, uh, another edit, another edit. And then because we're just adding match frame edits, we haven't really changed anything. So the shot just plays through as normal. But if you mark an in mark at the beginning of your edits and out mark at the end, go into quick transitions and uh, toggle it over to white flash, apply to all transitions, add, and then play it and get this. White flashes. 
if you uh, synchronize that up with a camera shutter sound effect, then you'll help sell the shot that, or help sell the idea that you're getting uh, pictures being taken. Uh, I suppose it could also be gunfire. Yeah. Other than that, those are my quick tips for using quick transitions. Keep in mind that if you hit the keyboard shortcut, backslash, and then you hit return, it automatically adds the effect, uh, which by default is a dissolve. And in this case, the last one I used was a dip to color. So that's what it was. With the keyboard shortcut to bring up the quick transitions dialog, backslash, and the ability to press enter to automatically accept the settings, it's very easy to add the transitions like dissolve. And then when you combine it with the feature where you can apply it to everything from in to out, it's very quick to take 30 or 40 background clips as part of your B-roll and then quickly have them all do a dissolve or all do some sort of quick transition, including ones that you customize. As for this bin, quick transitions bin, once you start saving up a variety of different quick transitions, you can just copy that quick transitions, that AVB file, that's the bin itself, from one project to the next project so that those quick transitions are accessible in your other projects too. You can treat it like a little toolbox that you move around uh, from project to project. That's it. My name is Woody. I'm the Avid Instructor for Splice Training, I'm the author of Media Composer 6 Professional Picture and Sound Editing from Cengage Press, the official courseware for Media Composer 201. This is the kind of information that I teach in the Media Composer 110 course offered at Splice Training Centers across Canada and at training sessions around the world. You can reach me at woody at splicetraining.ca. Thanks.